Friends, I'm very happy that I was given this opportunity to say a few words in Persian. I wouldn't have done it, but since it started, I would like to say just a phrase. <clears throat> and that's what I want to say, and it explains for itself. <clears throat> we say, In Hame Awaz, how as Shahwa. That means all these victories, all these triumphs for the cause, that according to the beloved Shawi Afandi, it has amazed the men and women believers of the faith had, had no parallel in the three apostolic periods of the cause, is indeed the choice fruit of the labors of our beloved guardian Shawi Afandi. I'm very happy that one of the members of the Universal House of Justice, well, we shall hear <coughs> his message. Mr. Hoffman will be there in the Holy Land. <coughs> he confirmed this, and he said, everything we have now is from Shovya family. And of course, the Universal House of Justice, that infallible body, is following the steps of the beloved God. Friends, <clears throat> I am so inadequate to speak about the beloved Shovya Hand. I was asked to speak and was, I was <coughs> called to, to speak about my pilgrimage. And since I, I brought with me many documents, original which I never departed when I left on trips. But this time, out of my great love for all of you and my submission to the beloved Shovya Fendi, I brought them with me. But unfortunately, it didn't reach for the time. So I don't have it here. Maybe I'll share them tomorrow when I speak again because I heard our suitcases have been found. <clears throat> Friends, I'll, perhaps I start by this. Well, I'm very happy that we have different approaches <clears throat> about the station of the beloved Shovya We know how modest he was as Abdul Baha was. So many tablets revealed in honor of Abdul Baha that after the passing of Baha'u'llah when they quoted you know such as all the names revolved around him or Baha'u'llah prays that oh God bring light to my eyes when the master was in Beirut and so many things the Surat al Qus and others Abdul Baha wrote back and said, am I not the interpreter of the writings of Baha'u'llah? Yes, you are. Then he said, the interpretation of all these titles, such as, O oh, apple of my eyes, which shall not be any higher than that, Abdul Baha said, I am the interpreter, and the meaning of all is the servant of Baha'u'llah. No more. The beloved Shogi Afandi followed the same example. And he gave every credit to Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha. <clears throat> I had the great bounty to be in his presence seven times. Friends, I tell you, I never heard him to say I. Never. He spoke of the time of Baha'u'llah, of the time of Abdul Baha of the Baal. And then when it came to, for him to speak about his ministry and his time, he said, after the passing of Abdul Baha, the, the friends did this, did that. And I was there when the beloved Shawi Afandi 
was announcing the 10-year crusade. He said, after the passing of Abdul Baha, after the passing of Abdul Baha, the Baha'is took the message to 126 countries. And then the guardian paused and he said, they are not yet satisfied. They are not yet happy. They, they intend to take to 100 more countries and announce the world crusade. I was <coughs> in tears. I said, my beloved, everything happened in your time. He said, these were all the prophecies of Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha fulfilled. And then I remember exactly, I was walking with him to the close, to near the shrine of the Baal. And then he quoted from Abdul Baha, on che konad, u konad, ma che Whatever is done, is done by Baha'u'llah. What can we do? And that was a great lesson to the Baha'is until the next manifestation of Baha'u'llah, servitude. He signed the servant of his threshold, the threshold of Abdul Baha. He signed the servant of the threshold of the Baal. In, there's another story. In a rug, in a carpet that he offered to the very room of the Baal's declaration, and he ordered to be woven the servant of his threshold, Shobi. <clears throat> that was a great lesson. I enjoyed very much the different approaches and I enjoyed <clears throat> the talk. I just want to add one word to it, that that is right. After Abdul Baha, we go to formative age and the universal house of justice, the world order of Baha'u'llah. But have we ever thought who built and created the world order of Baha'u'llah? I read this from I, mo, all my notes are in the suitcases which, which are now found thanks to Baha'u'llah <coughs> the beloved Shobi Afendi in the dispensation of Baha'u'llah he tells us it should be borne in mind that the institution of the guardianship has been anticipated by Abdul Baha. In an allusion, he made in a tablet addressed long before his own ascension to three of his friends in Persia. We, we know even the names of these friends. To their question as to whether there would be any person to whom all the Baha'is would be called upon to turn, to turn to the person of, after Abdul Baha. And in the tablet, in the test of testament of Abdul Baha, Abdul Baha speaks of the light which comes after me in reference to the guardian and so many quotations. <coughs> to whom, yes, to whom all the Baha'is would be called upon to, to turn after his ascension, he made the following reply. As to the station ye have asked me, know verily that this is a well-guarded secret. It is even as a gem concealed within its shell. That it will be revealed is predestined. The time will come when its light will appear. Don't we see now? when its evidences will be made manifest and its secrets unraveled. About the beloved show we have <clears throat> But as I told you, in his great modesty, he gave every credit to the central figures of the faith and to the Baha'is. Even he did not rank himself with the Baha'is. The Baha'is are going to announce the tenure crusade, the Baha'is are intending to do this and that and all the other things. Well, I don't refer to the holy, 
to the scriptures that the name, as, as here, Abdul Baha confirmed, what did he say? He said, this is well guarded secret from the time immemorial. It is even as a gem concealed within its shell. The prophets of God in the Old Testament, in the Quran, in many quotations, the name of the beloved Shogi Afandi is so praised. Even the duration of his kingdom, it's written how long he would live in this world. How long Abdul Baha, the name of the guardian, was there in all these scriptures. If you are interested, I'll give you references to all these things. <clears throat> well, you know, you all, you're all familiar. When this Ms. Drayton of New York wrote to Abdul Baha that we know the prophecies of Isaiah, that during the time of the branch, wolf and lamb will lie together. And then it says, and a little child will lead them. And she said, I understand this. It has happened during the ministry of Abdul Baha. The, the beasts live together. But as far as to the little child is concerned, she was asking whether this little child was born. Abdul Baha wrote back and said, yes. He said, yes, this little child is born and exists. You have the, that and Perhaps I don't need to, <clears throat> to read it to you now. Abdul Baha said, I give you the reference, in which Abdul Baha said that he'll show this little child, which will show the greatest power of God. And he says his luminous face will, will illumine the whole world. Abdul Baha says, do not forget this as far as you live in this world because for this little child there will be phenomena and effects and miracles all for centuries and eras. These are, in the Quran there is a chapter that Abdul Baha quotes that chapter in his will and testament in reference to the beloved Shobhi the two insurging seas that starts with the salutation of Abdul Baha addressed to, for predicting the garden, the guardianship. Well, now I, ref I, I refrain reference to these. <clears throat> I'd like to speak today Yes, I found this. Verily, that infant is born and exists, and there will appear from his cause a wonder which thou will hear in future. Thou shalt see him with the most perfect form, most great gift. Friends, who am I to speak about the beloved Shogun? I'm so inadequate. A humble dust. Abdul Baha said it. Let's see what, how Abdul Baha praises him. Thou shalt see him with the most perfect form, most great gift, most complete perfection, most great power, and strongest might. His face glistened a glistening whereby the horizons are illumined. Aren't they all the world, the face of the garden, glisten now? In all the Pacific, in all these islands, in all these houses of worship, all over the world, which makes everybody astounded. Not the Baha'is, those, the enemies of the cause, those people who are now killing the Baha'is, they are astounded. Where are these places? all as a choice fruit of pioneering that the beloved Shobhi Afendi announced. <clears throat> these pioneering, these people, these martyrs that everyone credits the victory of the faith to them, 
They gave their love, their lives for their love of the beloved Shoah Hand. They were raised by him. They were not risen in the time of Abdul Baha, but the power of the words and encouragement and all the pro- plans of the guardian moved them to go and now moved them, moved, moving them to give their lives for him. Well, of course, all these things again go to Baha'u'llah. <clears throat> Therefore, forget not this account as long as thou art living. For as much as there are signs for it in the passing centuries and ages. Friends, it is too soon to appreciate the beloved Shoghi Hunt. The beloved God. How much he sacrificed. I don't know how he, how to tell you how he was. We were there in the Holy Land, in the pilgrim house, which looks from the hill, and we enjoyed very much to be there and at night face the room of the beloved Shoghi Effendi down the hill. And we could see the light there in his room. It was too far, we couldn't see him. But we watched. And then I said, I could see, I watched until midnight. The light was still on. And I thought, I said, oh God, how much the guardian works? Where does he start? When does he start? And when does he finish? The following day, being in the presence of the guardian, I didn't mention it to him, but through Baha'u'llah, he knew everything. Without mentioning to him, when I walked with him, he turned to me and he said, do you know what time I start work? <laughs> yes, my witness, my wife is here. And he said, I start work at four o'clock every day and I finish it until midnight after midnight this was the way the beloved Shobhi family worked friends I want to tell you about some of the assignments that I had from, from him and these assignments I give you <clears throat> I tell you a good note, some of these which I just made a note here Yes, I was in, in nine, uh, my first pilgrimage was in 1925, and it followed in, uh, until 1937, 38, 39, and I was so eager, I, I felt a burning love for him. I wished I could be in his presence many times. And he was so kind to me. He said to me, I give you a permanent, what you call, visa. Any time you can come, you, you're welcome. So it gave me that courage and that great happiness any time I could go. And I almost tried, went every year until, until the beloved Shobhya Fandi in 1939, when he dispensed with me, he said, I'll call you. And I knew that was the end. <laughs> and then in 1952. And I had, in 1937, well, I don't know whether I speak about all my, if I want to speak about everything comes to my mind, it, I need days and days and days. I was there in 1925, Looking, the beloved Shobhya Fendi did not come that day to the meeting of the friends. Every Sunday there was a meeting, a big gathering. Just imagine a big gathering with the beloved Shobhya Fendi be there and speak to him. He had a guest, an honorable guest. And I was, as a young man, don't ask me 
about my age. <clears throat> Although <clears throat> I have something to tell you about the beloved hand of the cause, Mr. Varga, without his permission, because it reveals his age. <laughs> <laughs> the late Varga, his father, that the beloved Shobhya Khan, he said, Wali Allah Khan Varga, he said, in the, in the company of all the hands, he was distinguished amongst all the 27 and then those who came later. Mr. Varga was distinguished. Um, he was chosen. And you know, his, the grandfather was the greatest, one of the prominent martyrs who gave his life, and that's one of, one of his sons for Baha'u'llah. And now Mr. Varga, his father was in the presence of Abdul Baha in his, as entourage with Abdul Baha in the West, in, in America. The uncle sent a photograph of Mr. Varga, who is now here with us, four months old, on his lap, sent to the father that Baha'u'llah has given us this child that you see him here. Now you guess how old he is. <laughs> and then everybody who received his mail, Abdul Baha said, what was the news? And Mr. Varro said, bowed and said, he received a letter and they have sent this photograph sitting on the lap of his uncle. Abdul Baha said, let me see. And when it was offered to Abdul Baha, he kissed it. And he should tell us, I may be wrong. On, on his right hand, on, on one of the hands, Abdul Baha wrote hand. And on the other, he wrote confirmed. Yad -e Yad. And on the brow or on the Ya Baha al Abha, Allahu Abha. This remained in the family. Nobody knew the significance for so many years until the beloved Shogya Pandi, you tell me about his innate knowledge, until the beloved Shogya Pandi appointed him as a hand of the cause of God. And when it was reported to him, out of his great modesty, he said, apparently I didn't know that. But he knows. They knew everything. They speak to us according to our capacity and our shortcoming. Because else we cannot withstand, we cannot be in their presence. If the guardian would say to those close to him, if he showed his power, none of them could live with him. So that this is one of the, one of the wisdoms. <coughs> in 1937, well, I was telling you, I was in the Brigham House and I went to serve the pilgrims with chai, giving their tea. Then I faced the room of the garden from the hill, and something passed in my heart. I said, oh, Baha'u'llah, I wish I'd be here during the wedding of the beloved Shogun. 1925, I didn't know what was going on. And I had a dream that the wedding would change when the garden is 40 years. Then, when I came one of, in one of my trips, and after the garden was not there, I went to the shrine of Abdul Baha and prayed hard. And there, from that shrine, I wrote a letter to the garden. I said I, I was so sinful, full of shortcoming, that I came as far as here that I was deprived. The beloved Shobhya Khandi wrote back, and he said, soon you'll cherish your desire. He said, soon you will come, and you'll accomplish the heart the, the, of your heart, the desire of your heart. I didn't know anything until we reached Baghdad, and speaking to some of the friends who lost one of the family, they said, don't speak about this, these things. This is the day of joy. This is the beloved guardian's wedding with Ruya Khanum, the daughter of 
Maxwell's. And then I rushed because that time the Shah was so the, the, the old Shah, the father of the one who was dethroned. They were not in favor of the faith, and there was no, no relation between Persia and America because something happened, which is a different story. And then, after the, the, the table of the garden came, now the unity of the East and West has been accomplished. Just imagine, at the time that the Shah cut his relation with the West, the beloved Shovia Handi sends this cable. So we knew that it wouldn't reach Tehran. From Baghdad, I sent a cable to Tehran, and I gave the glad tidings very briefly. Glad tidings, guardians, wedding, Maxwell's daughter, and my signature. And when I reached there, and it was reported to the guardian, the beloved guardian asked me to write down what I sent, which I did, and he asked me to send... <coughs> a cable and write to the Baha'is of Iran. But he, just a year before, less than a year, he said, your heart's desire will, will be accomplished. So that the news was given to the Baha'is of Iran. <coughs> Friends, the beloved Shogli Afandi gave me many assignments. One of the assignments that I had was to be as errand for the God, a peon, to, to send his, to announce his cables or to deliver to the National Assembly, to, to the individuals, to different countries. And that was, that continued for over 22, 23 years, all the time. And that was the the most joyful times of my life. When I went home and I asked, was there any cable? Yes. One, two, three, four, five, sometimes five cables a day. <clears throat> and I simply acknowledged by cable. I made ablution, I prayed and opened these cables and sent and delivered to whoever he was addressed to. <clears throat> this was one of the assignments that I had and until, nine, until the, the time that he passed on, the beloved Shogri he passed on. He sent me in 1937, well, amongst these cables, I had, I received a cable. I haven't brought that with me, but I have others. I, I, maybe I bring tomorrow here. Even if you can't see it, I put it here. It's a blessing, remembrance, in remembrance of the beloved Shobiyahan. There was one of the pioneers in Afghanistan, in Kabul, Azari, his name, and he had a great problem. He didn't know what to do, and he wrote a letter expressing his great desire to give his life for the guardian and asked for early re relief. I was a member of the National Assembly. The National asked me to, to present to the beloved Shogi Afandi that Azari is asking for his prayers and for early relief. In compliance with the instructions of the National Assembly at that time, I wrote the cable. I had, I had, I have still a very close friend, closer than brother to me, Salim Nunu. Many of the friends know. He came to my office and I said, Mr. Nunu, would you take this cable to the telegraph office for communication? I thought that would reach earlier than if I went after my office hours. He took it there and gave it to the telegraph office. Now the story doesn't end here. I came home for after my office hours for lunch. As usual, I asked my wife, was there any message from the guardian? Yes, here you are.
I opened that. I prayed and opened. The beloved Yogi Afandi in that table says, Ashur Azari in Kaaba, of my, of my prayers. I was so astonished. How could it be in two hours, three hours, two hours, the cable we sent and the answer came so quick. I left my lunch. I went to Mr. Nunu. I said, let's go to the telegraph office to see what happened. And when we went there, they said the cable was on the table, not yet communicated, not yet sent. These are the things all documented. I have, thanks to Baha'u'llah, the original of these cables with me. I was in, instructed by the beloved Shoghi Afandi to visit the friends in Persia. So we had a wonderful time to go every weekend to drive from Tehran to different parts of the country. And I tell you, we didn't know. We, we simply could sit behind the wheel. If there was a horn or some connection, we didn't know anything. And it happened behind the door, behind the wall of the Shah, who was such a dictator, the horn started to blow, and we left the car and ran away. We didn't know how to disconnect it. And we covered all these places. The beloved Chogya Fandi wrote and said, give the glad tidings to the friends in Iran and visit them on my behalf. When I finished that, again in the following year, he sent another message through Mr. Nunu, who accompanied us sometimes, and he said, let him start over again. So we had that great bounty, and nothing is more important, and according to Baha'u'llah, more sweet than to be with his friends. The communication, the company of the friends is next to the company of God. And we covered again all Persia for the second time. <clears throat> Until 1939, when the twin monuments of the mother and brother of Abdul Baha were transferred to the to Carmel. The beloved Shoghi Afandi gave me the original tablet to take it to Persia, and I had the bounty to be there when the guardian dedicated, when it started, when that night with the, all the lights were lighted, ignited, and then the beloved Shoghi Afandi spoke of the station of the mother and brother of Abdul Baha and said this was the fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah in 54th chapter. Nobody knew. He said the whole chapter is addressed to the mother of Abdul Baha in large thy tent and Well, enlarge thy tent that God says, oh, here you are, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Well, I don't read the whole thing, although the beloved Shoghya Fandi said it from memory from the scriptures. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, the mother of Abdul Baha. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put, in, put to shame. For thy maker is thine husband, Baha'u'llah, thy husband. The beloved Shogh Yafandi said for thousands of years, they read this, Nobody knew what it meant. And it couldn't be more explicit than thy maker, Baha'u'llah, is thy husband. The Lord of hosts 
is his name. And then the beloved Chobi Afendi said, this was the beginning, the beginning and prelude to the formation of Universal House of Justice. When he sent a message to the friends in all over the world that this was great glad tidings, we didn't know what it meant. I remember one of the members of of National Assembly of Iran, when this was read, he's now in the Abha Kingdom, he turned to us, he said, this was not a glad tidings. Well, he couldn't, he, he couldn't hide. The transfer of these two monuments the, would be the great glad hiding. But that was the beloved Jehovah Yafendi he had in his mind to establish the world order of Baha'u'llah, the universal house of justice, in around the monument of the greatest holy leaf, and these two in the twin monuments that and then it started and his uh, as you know the ark and all these things and the unfoldment of the world order of Baha'u'llah until now we have the seat of universal house of justice we couldn't understand he was the builder of all these things and all the time he said, let the, pray, the friends pray for that day that Baha'u'llah, in the tablet of Carmel, he said, ere long, the ark of God will sail on thee. Many times, maybe every day, he said to the pilgrims, so fatajri safinatullah alayke, and he waved his hand, he said, he said it means the Ark of God that its occupants are the members of Universal House of Justice will sail on the O Mount Carmel. He said it means the laws of God will pour from thee to the whole world. And he said let them pray for this day. And this was his mission on behalf of Baha'u'llah. On behalf of the Bab. Because the Bab said to where is it with he who gazes upon the world or upon the order of Baha'u'llah? In the modern book of Bayan, he said it, he predicted. He couldn't see, the Bao could not see physically, but he heralded it. And the guardian said the station of the Bao, which is the manifestation of unity of God, he is a manifestation, forerunner of Baha'u'llah and forerunner for the world order of Baha'u'llah because of this verse in the Bayan. Baha'u'llah himself, he revealed the tablet of Carmel, and that needs a talk about the tablet of Carmel. Well, I'm speaking that part of mine which, which, which uh, pertains to me. The beloved Shobhi Afandi bade me to, to memorize it. That tab. And he gave me assignment to go to Persia and to make a trip to Yazd and Shiraz and chant it for the Afnans, the relatives of the Baal. Let them see what a great future and what a majesty for the Baal will come to pass. And I said, all right, and you might have heard me that I, as we, we the Persians do when we receive these things or any tablet, we just kiss it and put it on the shelf. I thought uh, I had uh, plenty of time when going back to Persia to memorize. And in the meantime, I was not busy there. And I blamed myself. I said, I wish the beloved Chobi Afandi would assign something for me to do it here. I'm just idle. I enjoyed myself. I had a good nap and everything going to the garden. And finally, I said, today I'll tell him to ask him to tell me to do something. I could pick up the flower at least and put it on the petals on the shrine, on the threshold of the shrines. And to tell you the truth, I never opened my lips before him. Just silent, 
as a dead man. The moment I found so many times, hundreds of times, thousand times, that he read my heart through the channel of Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha read the hearts. I said, I made a pledge not to speak, not to tell him anything. I said, if there was anything that I, sh- I should know, he would tell me, why should I take his time? Until that day, <clears throat> one day I made my mind, I said to myself, I said, today I'll tell, ask the God. We were in a big gathering in Mount Carmel. The beloved Shogu Yafandi was sitting. He always sat one or two chairs further down from that window which faces the, the Mediterranean. And three, four people, I, I think I was the fourth one or someone, he told me where to sit. And he was telling <clears throat> the whole audience of the, the wonders in this faith. And I was thinking and praying, oh, Baha'u'llah, help me today to tell it, to give me an assignment. In the middle of my thought, the beloved Shobhya, when he turned his face to me, and he said, have you memorized the tablet of Carmel? <laughs> and that moment, I wanted the ground would open <laughs> and follow. So that <clears throat> this, this was the beloved Shobhya Fendi. And then the beloved Shobhya Fendi sent me, I'm speaking of some of my assignments, to Egypt. In Egypt, and he, there was a man, an old man who lived 100 or 110 years, Hussein Ruhi. And this man was truly a wonderful, wonderful man. He received knighthood from British government. And he was historical. The, he was there. The beloved Chogu Afandi bade him that he should go with me we should, and sent us to obtain a visa in Jerusalem. And then coming back, he said, you go to Egypt and tell the friends the glad tidings. And then the guardian turned to him and he said, and you translate for me, for him in Arabic. None of us knew what were the, what was the glad tidings that I had to tell the friends. And I did not dare to ask the guardian. Until we were there in Egypt, the hall was packed with the friends, no room for anyone. And now I am in the presence of all these friends in Cairo. <clears throat> and I wanted to tell them the glad tidings. I didn't remember anything. Oh God, what to tell them? Something in my ears said, tell them about the sufferings of the Baha'is of Iran which was not a glad hiding, apparently. So I started to tell them that I went to the prison, and these prisoners were brought. The whole members of the assembly of Yazd, including two Afnans, the relatives of the Bab, and chains, the one of this, this old man, Mullah Tahir Malmiri, a great historian, chains, he was maybe 85, 90 years old, his eyes were weak, and others. And there was a fence from the floor to the ceiling, another fence in a little more distance, two meters, another fence. And these prisoners were brought that we see them. And an officer standing by them, with them. And And of course, you knew what, what was our emotion. I said to them that I came and the beloved has sent his bounties, blessings, greetings to you all. Oh, they started to dance hearing these things. But this Mullah Tahir could not hear, could not see me. He asked his friends, now he had these chains on his feet, he said, what does he say? And I said it, 
I came from high. This is a term that they understand the Baha'is. As folk Ahmadi. And explain to them. Mullah Tahir cried and raised his hands. He said, these are all his blessings. Who are we to deserve such a bounty? Stories like this, it was in my mind to tell the friends in Egypt. And when we finished that meeting, I met them again, not with that crowd. Coming back to the Holy Land, I was so unhappy, I blamed myself. Why didn't I ask, I ask the guardian the glad tidings that I should have accomplished my assignment? Now, in the middle of my perfection, the guardian said, don't worry. The, the great glad tidings were the story of the sufferings of the Baha'is of Iran that you have already said to the believers in Egypt. That was my assignment in Egypt. And then the guardian said, I'll send you, this was prelude to your traveling to the West. And he quoted Baha'u'llah. He said, Baha'u'llah says in his Masnavi, the poem, Ey jama'u'lullah, burun au az niqaw, ta burun au yad zimakrib au ta. That means, O beauty of God, Baha'u'llah addresses himself, and veil thyself, so that the sun may shine from the west. The beloved Shawi Afandi said, it means, he was the interpreter of the writing. He said, it means the son of the miracles and mysteries of the faith, the light, the son of majesty, will reflect, will rise from the west, from America, to the, to the east. That's the meaning. And then he paused and he said to me, I'll send you to the west, to America to witness with your own eyes the secret, the mystery, the light of the cause in those lands. I, I make it brief with this wonderful man, Hussein Ruhi, walking with him, the beloved Shobhi Afendi, he said to me, he said, in future, you'll be visiting all the places in the world our finger was on the geographic globe in the morning, studied all these things without knowing the purpose until we stopped in Guatemala. We couldn't pronounce it. We helped each other. And that day, when we arrived, when we were in the presence of the garden, he started. He said, thanks to Baha'u'llah that his cause has reached to all these places in Iceland. I don't know what would he say now in the presence of Baha'u'llah, the Bab, and Abdul Baha. Look what has happened. The cause has reached to every corner of the world, maybe to other planets. Then he paused and he said, he said he spoke about Europe, ten, ten gold countries. He spoke highly about America, and then about Central America, and then he paused and said, turned to us, said, also Guatemala. And this old man, Hossein Ruhi, he threw himself on the knees of the guardian and cried. The beloved Shobhi Afandi said, turned to me, and he said, you'll see all these places in future. This, your tra traveling to Egypt was preliminary to these trips. And then he paused, he said, and at the dedication of the house of worship in Wilmet, you will be chanting. Can you imagine? I asked the members of the National Assembly, did any one of you know what time the dedication would take place? Then the beloved Shobhya Khandi, then it was the time for my wife, my dear wife who is here, to be in the presence of the guardian. And the beloved Shobhi Afandi said to her that in future you'll accompany your husband and we'll see all these places. And the story 
In, that was 1939. 1952, he sat with us in the gardens of the shrine of the Baal and handed over to me many pages, maybe 16, 17 pages in an envelope, written in quick way with pencil on the top. Some of these pages contain the whole page, some one or two passages from the commentary of the Surah of Joseph and bade me to chant. I didn't know the purpose. And when I chanted, I put every sheet underneath and I, was, I thought that I could keep them. And I was very happy the way he interpreted. And I said, well, we go to the pilgrim house and we, we shall study over again and remember his explanations. He corrected me. When it, was, when, I, when it came to one point which I correctly chanted at the house of worship, Mr. Fulitan wanted to correct me. I said, yes, I did it that way, but the guardian said that was wrong. And then, this was, and the moment I put in, an, in the envelope, to put it in my pocket, the beloved Shovia and he stretched his hand to take it back. And that broke my heart. I had no choice. I went to him and presented and when I presented just in my heart, I said, oh, my beloved, that was not fair. <laughs> and then, until we were there at the dedication of the house of worship, the night we were in the hotel, our mail was on the table. And when I opened, the National Assembly tells us that the beloved Jovi Afendi presenting the program of the dedication of the house of worship, he, he just added that Khadim is to chant from the commentary of the Surah of Joseph and sent me those things that I wish to have. And that makes my precious gift. Well, to you tell me about my hour. I, I think my, my time is, is up. Thank you very much. I don't know what to tell you. And I never thought to tell you these things. I had some other notes. But you forget. You, you must forgive me. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of the beloved of all hearts, Shobhi Khan. In Persian poems, it has been said, Jam'i be to mashkulo and this is the translation. How long will this torrent of tears flood from each lash in my longing to meet thee? Oh, the unique one, my beloved. Will the night of thy separation ever end? Oh, thou whose agony and tribulations have, as an arrow, pierced the hearts of thy lovers. Multitudes, this is the translation of that part. Multitudes are occupied in thy praise, whilst thou art, thou art hidden from them. <clears throat> Down they are all <clears throat> as individuals in this multitude are occupied with the praise of the beloved Shobhya Handi, the guardian of this glorious manifestation, which according to Baha'u'llah and Abdul Baha, such a dispensation the revelation of Baha'u'llah comes to the world in every 500,000 years. The guardian of the cause, show we have. <clears throat> I remember the time in the presence of the beloved Shovya Fandi when he spoke 
about the significance of the twin, two. And in fact, he sent a cable to the National Assembly of the Baha'is of British Isles that they had published in their literature. <clears throat> and he tells us about the twin, which is so significant in this cause. He told us verbally, he said, we have twin cities, holy cities, Akka and Haifa, twin houses, the house of Shiraz and the house of Baghdad, of Baha'u'llah, <clears throat> the one, the, the house of the Baal. Twin manifestations, the manifestation of the Baal and that of Baha'u'llah. He kept on telling us everything is twin. Twin festivals, the birthday of the Baal and that of Baha'u'llah. Twin monuments of the, of the brother and mother of Abdul Baha. <clears throat> and that day, the guardian was so silent, he was so happy. So it gave me the courage to mention to him, we have two gardens, the garden of Ashraf and the garden of Rezvan. Then the beloved guardian smiled and he said, you said it, but you forgot to say twin views, the view of the sea and the view of the mountain. And after explaining these things, he paused and he looked at me deeply. He says, he said, in the cause of God, everything is twin. No wonder that he meant two interpreters, two manifestations and two interpreters. The Bab and the Ha'ulah as the manifestations of God and two interpreters, Abdul Baha and the beloved Shobi. And of course, <clears throat> tonight that he, Baha'u'llah called him, and according to the scriptures, which before we came here, I shared with some of the friends, also I, I shared with some last night, it was known in the scriptures how long the beloved Job Yafandi would live in this world his ministry, very explicitly mentioned that the first successorship of the Baha'u'llah, whose name is Abbas, Abbas will become the leader of mankind. Yasir al-Abbas, Imam al-Nas. And then he goes to say that the second successorship belongs to the person, to the one, to that wonderful figure whose name starts by She, Shobhi. And then explanation. <clears throat> the first one would have his kingdom for 30 years. 29 solar years in lunar calendar it may 30 and the second one, the ministry of the beloved Shobhi Afandi, 36 years in lunar calendar, it may 37 or more. And it says explicitly that the combination of those makes 70, 70 years. Well, it reached, it was 66, 67, but with the Arabs, when you reach to the half of a decade, it goes to the next. So, and many, many other passages. If that was known to them, how much more to the beloved Shobhya Of course, he knew what time he was passing. So that it, it removes from our minds that the beloved Shobhya did not leave us suddenly. 
He just closed his eyes the moment Baha'u'llah called him, and it was known to him. <clears throat> and this is my firm conviction that the beloved Shobhi Afendi answered the call of Baha'u'llah. He got rid of this mortal life just when he felt that he accomplished his ministry. And the greatest task for him was to form, to start the world order of Baha'u'llah and the Universal House of Justice. Friends, the beloved Shobhya Khandi, I tell you, he would not have passed before he accomplished his assignment from God. Else he would not have passed. So, although we are heartbroken with the passing of the beloved Shobhya Fendi, and only time can remedy, but we have his guidance the same way with Abdul Baha'u, Baha'u'llah, and the Baal. And the Universal House of Justice, that infallible body, they quote all the time from his writings, the, guard, the guardian's writings, from the central figures of the faith. <clears throat> so that he is with us always in spirit. Friends, he is now in the Abha kingdom and he is my witness. If I feel any minute that he is no longer with us, that would be the end of my life. We all feel his closeness to all of us. <clears throat> so that we have his guidance. I don't know really how to start. I'm so excited. I was in 1957. The beloved Shobhya Fendi gave me an assignment to come to America and to visit the friends here also in Central America. And I think that that was my assignment to be, to be at the convention in Panama for the National Spiritual Assembly. They had a regional National Assembly that was split to Different and now we have in all Central America and South America, I, I can't tell you from memory how many 21, 27 national spiritual assemblies in the Western Hemisphere. That the beloved Shobhya Fendi, he was so happy when he mentioned that. There was something in his lips that I have repeated, repeatedly shared with the friends so that many friends. They know it from memory. And that was his beautiful word. You can memorize. Baby in it. That means look and see. Behold the bounties of Baha'u'llah. Once in a while he said, baby in it. What has happened in the world? He said, see baby in it for you, Zawt Elaw Hira. See the bounties of Baha'u'llah. In all Central and South America, in Latin Americas, during the lifetime of Abdul Baha, there was only one pioneer, House Abba. She passed on. But she was there at the dedication of the House of Worship in Panama. He mentioned that. He said in all these Latin America, there was only one pioneer. And then he said, baby, need. behold what has happened. And now, I don't know what would he say in the Abha kingdom, baby in it, what has Baha'u'llah done through the, through the sacrifice of his beloved guardian and the efforts of the beloved friends in all parts of the world. <clears throat> well, uh, I remember in, 
In Switzerland, I shared this with Miss Little, who was a pioneer there, a wonderful lady. I think I should mention the name of some of the pioneers of the hands and so forth this day. And she memorized this the moment he went to the, she went to the presence of the beloved Shobhya Kandi, the moment she arrived with a gesture, he said to the beloved Shobhya Kandi, baby did. The beloved guardian smiled and he said, I know who told you. (laughs) (coughs) Friends, he, I was in, going back from America on this trip, this assignment that I had, and I thought that I finished my assignment. It took a long time until we were there with the family. Well, my wife is here, the children. And I tell you, when I look at the beautiful faces of the Tuer family, that for going to America, we thought that many people, the friends could go to all these conferences. <clears throat> but the beloved Shobhya Fendi advised that going on teaching trips had priority. So that I wrote to the friends in Iraq and other places who were preparing to go to these conferences and of course they stopped going and they started teaching. That was during the no rules. And we had, we didn't know this. We had packed our suitcases to go and to said, we said to the friends goodbye and we were going. When this message reached from the beloved Shobhi Afandi that teaching for the friends had priority. So I mentioned to my wife and children that since this is the desire of the beloved Shobhi Afandi, we rather not go. We unpacked our suitcases. And then I had my assignment to go. The following day, a cable reached from the beloved Shobhyakhan, in which he said, wife and children are permitted to accompany you. Again, we made our suitcases and went to this trip. <clears throat> Even he told us, he instructed me how long to, how long to stay in Beirut. For two weeks he gave. And then he said two weeks in Beirut and just before he passed on he gave me another assignment to go back to Beirut. <clears throat> Anyhow, we were in Switzerland on our way to Tehran. Everything was arranged. We had on the verge of going a cable reached from the beloved Shobhya family in which he was so kind to tell me, now start to visit the friends in the Scandinavian countries and Benelux countries. Then we went to different directions. The children and Javido, they went to Tehran, and I went to Europe and Scandinavian countries. It was very close to the time, to the passing of the beloved Shobhya and he was so kind to me. Had I not received that cable, I would have been deprived to be at his funeral in England. And he made my itinerary. Can you believe it? He gave me assignment to be at the dedication of the Hazire Baha'i Center in Luxembourg, which was just one day before his passing. So I couldn't change. Even if I liked to change it, I could not because it had to end there. And then in the cable, I have all these cables. He puts a stop, S-T-O-P, separates, in which the guardian said, and visit Beirut, and how to say and whom to meet and how to speak. 
Yes, in that table, the beloved Shobhi Afendi says, speak strongly. Well, I had that assignment, which was fulfilled after the passing of the garden. The itinerary was made by him. <clears throat> when I was in Europe, I was so tired. I, was, I looked miserable. The friends could not come to me. And I had a dream in Belgium that the greatest holy name fell down on the floor. And the funeral of the beloved Shogya Handi I had in my dream. I couldn't understand. I thought that perhaps I said Samandari, who is loved by everybody, is going to pass. But then I, could, I didn't sleep during the nights in the hotels, the neighboring rooms. They complained to the to the hotel manager, and they asked him to change my room. I I couldn't sleep. I cried. I until we found what was the significance. The, the passing of the beloved Shobhya. Which then, that I, I was so grateful to him that because of his direction, I could be there at the funeral, at his funeral. <clears throat> Friends, yesterday, the beloved hand of the cosmos said, Lapa told you about the tablet of centenary of the beloved Shokya. I was explaining to the friends that the style of his writing is unique. Who in the whole world could write like him? If you bring all the poets the writers in Persia who are so proud of their literature, I tell you, they cannot compose half a sentence that the Guardian wrote in Persia. In this, in all his messages, the centenary tablet, just like God passes by. You know English, the English style in God passes by. <clears throat> One of the Learn one of the scholars of the faith, Eshra Khawari, who is known to the Baha'is of the world, and the beloved Shobhi Afendi. I heard, I read somewhere, but I can't give you the reference. He called him the philosopher, the East Eastern philosopher of the cause. He was very learned. <clears throat> he has written two books, thick books, just explaining every word of that tablet of the beloved Shogya Fendi. References made. We had another, another Baha'i, Fazel Tehrani, who was very learned and descendant of Sheikh Abdul Hussein. This is the miracle of the faith. Sheikh Abdul Hussein, who was responsible for the exile of Baha'u'llah from Baghdad, the bitterest enemy of the faith from his family, his grandson became a wonderful Baha'i for Zele Tehrani and a prominent Baha'i teacher. And when he read the, this tablet of the Guardian and the style, he cried and he said, so far we knew the Guardian through the will and testament of Abdul Baha. But from now on, I know him because of his right. Where did he learn? is Persian and English and Arabic. He never been in Persian. I was telling the, the friends that in Baghdad, in Toeb's family, who are now here, they had a beautiful mansion, very aristocratic. A great man would be prime minister of the country came to see them. And we were all sitting. He started, he had the whole meeting to him. He spoke half an hour or more, and then he, after he finished, he said, he asked 
جناب داوتوئر the head of this family to introduce everyone and when Mr. Toyev started to introduce each one it reached to a Baha'i scholar Haj Ahmad Hamdi I think we should mention the name of these wonderful souls he was secretary of the Muslim leagues in all Arabia that kind of a scholar his eloquence his knowledge And then, when it reached to introduce him, Mr. Toyer said, this is Haj Ahmad Hamdi. And this man, this great person, turned to Mr. Toyer and said, you have insulted me. Why didn't you say first that Haj Ahmad is here? He's the ocean of knowledge, and in his presence I should have kept silence. I should not have opened my lips. That great man, when the tablet, these writings of the guardian were chanted, or he had, he just became so humble, tears run on his face, and he said, where did the guardian learn this Arabic? The man who was well known in all Arabia now became a Baha'i, and he was so impressed. That was in the, your home. <coughs> We had amongst the, the non-Baha'is, custodian of the mosque of Sepah Salar, which is the greatest mosque in Tehran, the mosque and school. The Shah of Persia is custodian. He was acting for the Shah. I don't mention his name just in order to avoid anything for the family or if he's alive. He attended the presence of the guardian and came, coming back to Persia, to Tehran, he sent a message to the National Assembly that he wanted to meet some of the Baha'is just to express his gratitude to the beloved Shawi Afandi that he had the bounty to be in his presence. So he was invited. That great Mullah, well known. <clears throat> and when he came and the National Assembly arranged for a meeting, He discussed, he told us about the beloved Shogu Afandi, and he said, I don't know, where did he learn Persia? He'd never been in Persia. And he spoke about the gardens of the holy shrine of the Baal. He said, if you employ 100 gardens, uh, gardeners, they cannot make such a beautiful job that the beloved Shogu Afandi has done only with two gardeners. This was his amazement. And after this, he said, I haven't heard any of the writings of the beloved guardian. Have you any? We had that centenary tablet. And when it was recited, it was chanted, he became so humble, this great mullah, the greatest. And then he said, oh God, my God, this, this is the style of Ali. The Imam Ali, I can't see any difference. And the, the words that he said, I put it down, and it was mentioned to the guardian, reported to him. He said, the owner, the one who wrote this, these passages, has elme ladonni, has innate knowledge from God. That was his expression about the guardian. Another one, a writer, newspaper man, in a meeting in the court of the Shah, the members were there, and some of the writers, some of the ministers in the cabinet, the man came, and they asked him to speak about his trip. He said, the thing that I can share with you is that I've been in the presence of the guardian. Show me a hand. And then he said, Just imagine Sa'di, like Shakespeare to the, to the British and English people. He said, I just could see, and you can see that Sa'di was sitting there and speaking with that eloquence. That was his expression about the beloved Shobhya And the dean of the University of Literature, in Persian literature, again, I don't mention his name, 
He announced in the university that if there was one person in the whole world to write good Persian, it's Shoghi Efendi. Through his messages and through that knowledge that this Mullah said, the innate knowledge of the Guardian, we have all these writings of the Guardian and the guidance until the next manifestation of Baha'u'llah. <coughs> Friends, the beloved Shobhi Afandi, I mentioned yesterday that he started <coughs> he started yes, with the, with the Ark of God, A-R-C, around the Ark, around the monument of the greatest holy leaf and the, the monument gardens of the brother and mother of Abdul Baha, he prepared all the plans for the world order of Baha'u'llah. He started by the archives and then he said the Ark of God, A-R-K, that means Universal House of Justice, will be built around the A-R-C. The Ark of God will be built around the ARC. And he started the first one, the archives, and then now we have the seat of Universal House of Justice, and they are intending to have one for the teachers, the institution of the hands, the international Baha'i teaching center, and the rest of it. But he started with this, with the in archives and he his beautiful way of expressing his, he started by M M in Arabic means the house or the place he said in future they'll go first to the Mashrib al you see it starts by M the house of worship at the head of universal house, uh, at the head of Carmel which you can see the obelisk they pray, no, first they go to Matlaul and Waur, the dawning place of the light, the shrine of the Baal. It starts by M. And then they go and pray in Mashrugal Azkar, the house of, the, of worship. And then they come to Merkaz Asar, the center archives, again with M, to study the writings. And after doing all these things, they go to Majmea Abrar, to the seat of Universal House of Justice. Oh, the beautiful way the guardian spoke about these things. This is what is happening in future. And now we can see most of it. <coughs> he placed all the, all the relics in this archive. Amongst them, a ring from Odus. Qudus, you remember the Intabarsi and the last letter of the living that Abdul Dabbar Baha'u'llah says the primal point is the Bab, the final point is Qudus. This, the ring of Qudus, a turquoise mounted on a silver ring, which as far as its, its value is concerned is not very precious, but it's wrapped <clears throat> in a paper in which the father of the beloved Shobhi of Mendes has written on such and such a time when the guardian was a small child the Abdul Baha called me and said to me this is the ring of Quddus it's very precious you keep it and give to the apple of your eyes Shobhi of Mendes. that was Soon the archives will be established. And all these things that now we have in the archives. Just imagine if the whole world, the Christi Christians, had just the cloth that Jesus Christ covered his head, what would they do? And now we have everything in original kept for us and for future. <coughs> I think this. The beloved Shobhi Afendi, when he intended to appoint the hands of the cause, to my understanding, 
because he felt that he was going. And he wanted this institution that started by Baha'u'llah to take care of the integrity and unity of the cause of God. And just in order to do that, the beloved Shoghi Effendi, five years before he passed on in, 19, in 1952, he nominated and appointed the hands of the cause. With this great <coughs> responsibility, and called them, called this institution as chief stewards of the embryonic world order of Baha'u'llah. Friends, just imagine embryonic that the Guardian mentioned. He could see, he created this embryonic, and then he left us so that he accomplished his, his task. He brought that body, infallible body, in embryonic form, and then he was assured that, uh, and he left behind such wonderful, devoted Baha'is all over the world with the institution of the hands to be as chief stewards to take care and preserve the unity of the cause. And I tell you, these wonderful souls, many of them in the Abha kingdom now, they enjoy the presence of their beloved Shogya Fandi in the presence of the Baha'u'llah Baha and Abdul Baha. I'm inadequate to speak about the beloved Shogya Fandi. I'm also inadequate to speak about these wonderful souls, the hands, individual hands, who, who had such a great love for the beloved Shobhya including those before them who were appointed by the beloved Shobhya Handi posthumously. And the foremost amongst them is Martaru, that the beloved Shobhya Handi calls him, calls her, the apple of the eyes of the Baha'is of the world. He said to me, he said, do you know, well, in not exactly this term, why he, she passed on in Honolulu? She, she said, because she was international Baha'i teacher, and that was the will of Baha'u'llah that she should pass in Honolulu, which is half day way between east and west. So everything has significance, everything. And Dr. Esselman, that we know about his writing, his book, what he did in the world, and the rest of them. I, I think if I go through this, we need sessions after sessions to speak about each one of them. I mentioned the names and just a brief account of some of them. Dr. Esselman. Keith Ransom Keller, that wonderful lady that the beloved Shoghi Effendi conferred upon her the, the, the rank of the hand of the cause also as a martyr, American Baha'i martyr. You have two American, two Western martyrs. The first one, Keith Ransom Keller, who was also a hand, and May Maxwell who passed on in Argentina. She was given, she had that rank too. And I was a close friend with Keith Ransom Keller. While she was in Tehran, uh, I used to escort her and to take her to the markets, to the bazaars. She impressed everybody. She impressed all the dignitaries in her. She came as ambassador on behalf of the National Assembly of America and Canada. At that time, Canada and America had one National Assembly. And she, she tried and she could obtain the, um, to remove the ban of the Baha'i literature, but unfortunately, the minister of the court was, uh, <coughs> was dismissed and it did not work. But she told me many times, she was, I remember all the time, 
When her spirit also others are with us, she, used, she said to me, she said, Darling, a time will come that you will remember me. And she said, at that time, you be astonished how Baha'u'llah has chosen an old woman, weak and humble like me, to come and serve him and the Baha'is of Persia. She was, the, the beloved Shogi Afandi called her essence of eloquence, Keith Ransom Kerr. Now she is in the Abha Kingdom and prays for us. Abdul Jalil Bey Saad in Egypt, who wrote, translated Nabi's narrative in Arabic, such a style that a man in Persia who got Nobel Prize in, in Arabic, when he received a copy, he said, this is a wonderful style in Arabic, I haven't seen like that. And he was the judge in Egypt. He was, ex he was exiled from Egypt because he wrote many articles about the faith. I met him, this wonderful man. Said Mustafa Rumi, who started the faith in Burma, and many of the translations we have from him, it was done by him. A wonderful man, <clears throat> Louis Gregory, that wonderful, wonderful man that Abdul Baha said he was a crystal. He has written so much about Louis Gregory. And you study the details of his pilgrimage in Egypt when, where he attain, attained the presence of Abdul Baha, also in this country. These are our examples. I don't say the example, but examples of devotion and love. Roy Wilhelm, such a wonderful man. Roy Wilhelm is so known. Roy Wilhelm, who sent our beloved Baha'i brother, Curtis Kelsey, to the Holy Land, to extend the wires, all the wires and pump, all these electrical facilities was done through him and through Roy Wilhelm. <coughs> Sutherland Maxwell, the father of Amatul Baha, Ruhi Khanon, that after his passing, the beloved Shogi Afendi said his robe was put on the shoulder of his daughter, Amatul Baha Ruya Khanon, Canadian. Emilia Collins, that wonderful man, that wonderful lady, that the beloved Shogi Afendi gave her residence in the house of Abdul Baha. She was just, she had such a, a love for the garden. It's beyond my understanding. And the beloved Shogi Afendi said, as far as she lives in this world, she must be in the house of the master. But after she passed on, this is not the place for anyone to reside. Emilia Collins. <coughs> Dorothy Baker, that wonderful lady. I'm very happy that now his uh, Dorothy Baker's daughter or granddaughter has written a book. Granddaughter. Beautiful. I studied. I enjoyed very much this wonderful, wonderful lady that I met her in all over the world, in India. The last night she was leaving, she and the pioneers came to the front she called them, 19, I don't know, 20 to 2. It's written there. She gathered them and came in front of them and said, I don't have anything to offer to you but my life. She offered her life to these pioneers. And the beloved Shogi Afandi in his messages, he says, Mediterranean was blessed. The death of Mediterranean by the, with the body, with the remains of Dorothy Baker. And the shore with the body of mm, 
the belly. Uh, can anyone help me? And who was the first pioneer of the Ten Year Crusade? That wonderful lady. Who? A lady. Well, you know, and this was, and I met her too in New York. She was, and when I went to see, to, to meet him, Ella Bell, that's right, Ella Bell. And then we met, I went to see her, and she was on, almost on the bed of death. They said, nobody can see her. Well, when I went, they said, all right, you come. And when I went, I took her hand, and I said, where are you going? The, National, the Spiritual Assembly of New York was preparing for his funer her funeral. And she said, were you not there in the, in the, in the um, Intercontinental Conference? where it was said that the women, uh, that the el elderly people can take their bones and bury in these gold countries. I'm taking my bones. And she did. And the beloved Shobhi Afendi gave her such honor, mentioning her, her name and the sacrifice she made. And you know this Dorothy Baker, <clears throat> that when I passed through Arabia, that wonderful, wonderful lady in Arabia who is now living, I don't think he, she doesn't mind if her name be mentioned. Mrs. Yatim, the wife of Sheikh Yatim, who is the wealthiest man in all Arabia. And this lady embraced the faith. She is very learned. Her articles in English, in Arabic, she is the I would say the first lady in all Arabia. And when she lost her daughter, who was in the same plane of Dorothy Baker, and Gloria Faisy, Mrs. Faisy, went to, for the, to, to express her sympathy. And when she saw that she was crying, she called her and said, there is life after death. Don't cry so much. And she said, I believe, because I had a dream that there was another lady in the play who told me, don't cry, your daughter, I'm taking care of your daughter. And then Gloria said, do you know the, the lady? No, a lady in that play. Can you recognize her? She, yes. And when the photograph of Dorothy Baker was brought, she cried and she said, this is the lady who's taking care of my daughter. Any time I go to Arabia, and I should not conceal it, that any time I feel I need spirit, I go to Arabia. I take the plane without anyone knowing, go to uh, Arabia. And what's it? Yes, she became Baha'i after this, after her dream. And the family, the son and others, they wanted to kill her. And she used to come to Baha'i meetings with Abba on her, her face. Nobody to recognize her. She is, <clears throat> the buildings, the luxury they have, it's just like the emperors of France, Louis, what they say about the furniture and everything they had, Sheikh Yatim. And then her husband intervened and said to, to the children, I'll take care of her. Don't worry. And she's now, she goes to the Baha'i conferences. Uh, if someone encouraged her, she would have been here now. <laughs> yes, she would. She went to all these conferences. And the husband also is uh, in favor of the faith, although she doesn't, he doesn't. And any time we go there, she invites us. She knows everything about the faith. And the husband was so nice during the fasting month of Baha'i fasting month in such a fanatic country, she said right before sunrise, her husband came and said, come on, this is the time of fasting. And it seems it was, it coincided with a day that we should not fast. But she is, the, the husband is taking care of her. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And last time when we were there, come on, come here, come on. No, no, come here, come on, 
coming. Oh. Why don't you say, Janam Varga, you, you announce it. <laughs> this lady, of course, her husband is the wealthiest, but she is so honest, she wouldn't spend from her, her husband. Mr. Varga, the hand of the cause, the trustee of Hugu, now she say, he says that this lady is offering Hugu Allah to the fund. These are the miracles of Baha'u'llah. And last time when we were there, she was so happy. She said that her husband had, has invited us to her palace, his palace. But he avoided, he, he just was kind, but never invited us. But this time he invited us. And we went to his palace. And the moment I wanted to come, she, he rushed to take my coat, which in, in Eastern countries, you see, they don't do that. It's the greatest honor they give if they do to someone. And he said, no, I must take your coat. And he helped me. He asked photographer to, sit, to take photographs of us. And these all were <coughs> the credit due to the spirit, the wonderful spirit of Dorothy Baker who is now taking care of the daughter of Yatim, Sheikh Yatim. And I have the name of Mother True, who is so known to all of us. Mother True, who was responsible, whose, whose uh, efforts, whose devotion, love, created and that was for this house of worship, the mother temple of the faith. She was, she is called Mother True and I should say she was mother of the mother temple of the Baha'i world, Mother Masha Alaska. <coughs> Horace Holly, that wonderful person, Yahweh Ha'olaka, so eloquent, so well known, the one who wrote to the beloved Shoghi Afandi an administrative world order of, is we are indebted to him with, the, with his writings to the beloved guardian and the beloved Shoghi Afandi approved or made corrections and now we have administrative world order. He had such a sense of humor, beautiful. I haven't seen in the whole world one to have that kind of <coughs> of uh, what did I say I forgot of the sense of humor you must re remind me the sense of humor he had a beautiful sense of humor but he never smiled he said it and you know I had that experience that now God through God's mercy we have our suitcases last night and I used to take my suitcases with me and a, a small uh, what's bag with me for the things that I needed at once. And because of the problems and difficulties we had at the frontiers, I used to put my suitcases at the customs house and just took the necessary things that I needed, such as razor and other things, to that conference and coming back. But Horace Holly had to carry many suitcases. I approached him. I said, Horace, I, this is my habit. I put my um, suitcases here at the airport, and I take just a small bag. And he looked at me and said, and then why do you take it? <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he had such a sense of humor, Horace Holly. And when the beloved Shobhi of Wendy in... <coughs> In Indian conference, in intercontinental conference, in New Delhi, he gave assignment that each hand where to go. He assigned some to go to Japan. I was, I had, I was given that assignment to Japan and Far East, to everyone. And when it was announced, 
he came to me and said, I don't know where I can hide myself that the guardian would not find me. <laughs> and then he said, I bet you if I, if I go ahead, the guardian would give me some jobs there to do. He was a wonderful man. <clears throat> that was Horace Holly. Mr. Varga, I mentioned the father of our beloved hand here. Mr. Varga, Valiullah Varga, who was one of entourage of Abdul Baha, and the beloved Shoghi Afandi said to me, he said, write to him. And he said, and appreciate his services. He, in the company of hands, he is outstanding chosen. Mr. Varga. George Thompson, oh, that wonderful person. That wonderful person that the cause of God has not produced so far a man like him. That the beloved Shogi Afandi says, the best writer we have in the cause. The best scholar we had in, in Persia is Abul Fazael, and the best one in the West is George Thompson. To me, he had the, great, he, the greatest honor, the guardian showered upon him, asking him to write preface for the uh, God Passes By and for hidden words. Nobody has, give, has been given that task, you know, because Abdel Baha said his writings and the God, writings of Baha'u'llah should not be compiled in one volume. Who are we to appreciate and write Pre, uh, uh, pre, prefix, what did I say? Uh, pre, uh, whatever you say. <laughs> prefix. Who has that? But the beloved Shogi Afandi chose him amongst all the Baha'is to do that job. <clears throat> I went, I, I had the honor to be at his grave in, in England. And I tell you, when you go to his grave, there is a small chapel and the, the sign, it is as if the greatest holy name. It's not that, but just exactly the way it, we, we, it's there on the top of that chapel. And the stone on, on his grave, well, it's just a phrase from the Bible. I saw the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, the new heaven and the new earth on his grave because they didn't accept anything from writings but this was perfect Fred Schafflacher again Canadian that wonderful man this great man I met him in in, in Chicago at the Intercontinental Conference and I heard that there was a time that the house of worship the building was stopped because of lack of money and he was in the presence of the guardian. In the presence of the beloved Shovia Fendi, he offered $100,000 at that time that the building be continued. And that brought tears to the eyes of the beloved Shovia Fendi. And we were sitting together, and when I mentioned to him, he just pressed my hand and said, changed the subject. He didn't want that to be mentioned. These are our heroes and heroines. These are the treasures of the cause in this revelation. Just imagine. Can any of the past religions show such devotion from, shown by any one of these wonderful souls? You know, Abdul Baha coming to Canada to, to the Notre Dame in Montreal, he entered with some of the entourage with him and with the pumps and all these things in, in that church, came back halfway. He didn't enter. And he said, he said, look, all these pumps and majesties that is now offered to Jesus Christ is the, is the fruit of 11 disciples of Christ. 
And then he said, and the chief disciple of Christ denied him three times. And then he turned to the, these entourages with, with him. He said, see, what will happen? Baby need. Behold, what will happen in future with these wonderful devoted souls in the cause that you can compare? Well, Abdul Baha, addressing the Baha'is of the West, he says, O oh, ye apostles of Baha'u'llah. Do you remember that passage? He addresses you, all American, Canadian Baha'is. O oh, ye apostles of Baha'u'llah, may my life be sacrificed for thee. Just imagine, apostles of Baha'u'llah, that now again I, re- I recall, I remember the hand of the cause, Tarazullah Samandari, that wonderful person who came to this country and he wanted to go and visit the friends. The National Spiritual Assembly of the United States sent Evans Liston, the, that wonderful man, uh, am I right? He, he was a minister and he went to prepare the way for Mr. Samandari to go for the publicity. And somewhere in Boston, he prepared the way and a man, a great priest who has God knows how many thousand followers, he came to him, Mr. Samandari was sitting and knelt before him and asked Mr. Samandari to bless him. Mr. Samandari just put his hand over the head of this man. And the moment the man was satisfied and sat down, then Mr. Samandari rose and went to him and knelt. And he said, now you must bless me. <laughs> and then on his way, he went on all these tours until he reached in California, in Los Angeles. He was sick, he was in bed, he could not speak, so the physician said nobody should go to him. If anyone wants to see him, just see his son. A man the, from the press that it was worldwide and it came in all papers went there and he said, no, I want to see the man who has, whose eyes gazed upon the countenance of Baha'u'llah. Just, I want to sit beside him. And he sat and asked a question, Samandari with fever, the fever. He, would, he just got up, he, do you remember his gesture? And answered the question and went back again to bed. And then this man said to Mr. Samandari, he said, I cannot praise you. The only thing I can say, you are like the Peter. And he said, with one difference, Peter met the son, but I had the bounty to be in the presence of the father. <laughs> and that came in all papers. The moment I read, I took the telephone, I said, Mr. Samandari, you said something that in future it must be written by gold and diamond. But he said he forgot to write the rest of it. I said, although that was, that was my bounty, I, I'm not, I do not deserve to unlace the boot of Peter. Well, you tell me any time my time is up. Is it finished? I look at your writing, then it seems that... <coughs> Friends, well, in Persian, sometimes... Just one word and one poem, one sentence would do the purpose. And at this moment, I would say that. And with the Persians, they have this habit. When you say a verse from the poets or from the writers, that ends the discussion. And now I would say, مجلس تمام گشت و به آخر رسید عمر ما همچنان در اول وصل تو مندی That means the meeting is adjourned and my life is the end this is the end of my life but we are still in the beginning of thy praise O oh, beloved show we have ended with I leave this half the way but I address him we are just in the beginning of his praise and he's no longer with us 
although he is always with us. Thank you. For sharing such treasures, such precious treasures, such personal reminiscences, which no one else could share with us. Thank you for being you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.